Okay? Who believes that an effective BA really doesn't have to have any understanding of the business area, but extremely effective facilitation? Okay, very great, good. Okay, so I, we can get the first one out of the way. Yes, you do not need to be the expert. As a matter of fact, from experience, I'll tell you, um, the more of an expert you are, the higher risk you just became to the project, because I guarantee you I'm gonna start getting your requirements and not the real business user's requirements. And you'll get opinionated, you'll become one of them. <laughs> You know, I know better for you. I know what's best. Um, but of course, of course, these skills come in handy when you don't have any engaged business users. So what you guys just told me is that we need to know just enough about the problem domain. And some people feel like you actually don't even need to know anything about the problem domain. You really just have to have extremely great facilitation and requirement elicitation techniques. If you know how to get the requirements from the right people, you're good to go. I think that just enough to know who the right stakeholders are is really important. What I mean by that is if I don't, if I just, let's say you just come to me as the business lead and you say, here's the three people you need to talk to, and I don't understand the environment enough for what you're talking to me about to even know who could be the other stakeholders, that I have a problem then. Do you see what I'm saying? So just enough to know who else should I be talking about. If I don't understand the problem domain whatsoever, I may just take you for your word and just say, okay, fine, I'll just talk to these three people. I have to go do some research, just a little bit of research. There are lots of elicitation techniques. Um, do you guys remember the four-step process that I showed you? There's visioning, brainstorming, breakdown, deep dive. When you're visioning and brainstorming, you're using some of these. And obviously, I'm a huge advocate of drawing and modeling and pictures and post-it notes, as Lisa Feynman would tell you, right, Lisa? Um, <laughs> So visioning, brainstorming, so interviewing and surveys. I think the classic way is lots of interviews and lots of documentation. Um, here what I'm suggesting is we definitely need the interviews. Surveys are awesome. Have you guys used use case diagrams before? Okay. I gotta talk to you about using them the right way. I've seen a lot of companies that have used use case diagrams for detail requirements and they get out of hand. They become unreadable, okay? Use case diagrams we only use for visioning at the very beginning. They're very high level diagrams and they need to stay that way. They need to not become like your detailed process diagrams. So we'll talk about that real quick. Um, when I have, hey Sarah, when I have about 10 or 15 minutes, would you like, give me a clue? Okay. Um, storyboarding, role, role playing. Anybody use personas? Anybody understand what a persona is? I've heard of a persona. All right, I'll walk you through an example today. And then requirements brainstorming workshops. Now, when you get into some details, this is when we go through epic breakdown. We know what an epic is now, right? It's that big chunk, I call it the can of worms, that's about to open up. Um, acceptance tests. Hmm. This will be in the next session. Um, I cannot emphasize to you how important it is for you to start defining acceptance, user acceptance tests at the beginning of the project as requirements. That is what our definition of done is. If you cannot get from your users the definition of done, when will I be done? When will, Sally, when will you consider this bedroom done? When will you, and how will you test it? If I don't say, oh, when I walk into this bedroom, I'm gonna look at um, the color of the, the paint and I wanna make sure it really matches my eggshell, whatever. I'm gonna look at the carpet and I'm actually going to make sure that when I step on it, it feels you know, cushiony and that it really is the same type that I asked for. I'm going to make sure that the bed really is king size or whatever it is that you guys are going to put in there. So what I'm going to go through is here's how I'm going to test. And I'm giving you that up front. Do you normally get test cases right now at the end of the project? Anybody, anybody do that? Get test cases at the end of the project? Show me whether, okay. Here's what you're asking for, bucks. If you don't tell the developers what you're going to be testing until they're done developing, that equals bucks. Make sense? It's the, it's, the, it's, the really, it's the simplest thing to understand. A test is a quiz. You give me the questions up front, I'll make sure I pass. You give me the questions later, I will probably have some problems. I won't pass 100%. So anyway, I you know, can't go into that one. So today, I'm going to just talk to you real quickly about role brainstorming interviews, use case diagrams, obviously you can do surveys, focus groups and shadowing, all these techniques for identifying who are the right people. You do not have to use all of them. I'll just show you a technique of which ones can you use. So if you had to go through a six step process, it would look something like this and hopefully it wouldn't take that long.
first you would find the business lead and you'd say, hey, can I just have a brainstorming session with you and some of the subject matter experts? So you're my business lead and you tell me there's two other managers that I should talk to and maybe one user. I'm like, can we just spend 30 minutes and we're going to do a brainstorming session just like this one. And I'd just like all these people to tell me who are the right people that we should be considering on this project. Sales, marketing, accounting, who are the people that could be impacted about this, right? Just have that quick discussion, 30 minutes. Um, I can perform a survey to identify key behaviors, needs, and concerns. There's really three things you care about from these people. What do they want, right? Their needs and behavior. This is what we want the system. Concerns that they could have from any new system that you would develop, issues. And then what are their characteristics? Do they want something that's simple? Do they want something that's fast? Do they just care about the reports? Are they frequent users? Do they need a lot of help? You know, what is their characteristics? Um, I like surveys because surveys allow me to, to get a lot of information very quickly back from a lot of different people without having to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews. You guys use SurveyMonkey at all? It's like the best survey tool out there that I love. It's just really easy, it's free. Uh, you can publish it and I'll, it's really easy to create and you can get a whole bunch of whoever the users are to just give you very quick feedback. Um, you could then select the ones that gave you a lot of feedback or really good feedback. You can tell these are people that have good meat, right? Because sometimes they'll just say, oh, just talk to Kathy. And I'll go talk to Kathy and Kathy will say, I really don't know much about this. Have you ever had that problem, right? I, I don't know much about this. I'm not really the subject matter expert in this area. Well, if I could just do a quick survey and find out who's a subject matter expert in what and get them to give me some details, maybe I could stop wasting my time and going after the people that really have the meat, right, the real data. Interview the key users, and I would suggest, and I know a lot of business, how many of you guys do do this, because this would be awesome, shadowing actual users. Who else shadows? Okay, if you don't shadow, trust me, I, I want developers to shadow. I would like developers who are writing software to be able to shadow end users. So I expect 100% that you, the business analyst who is representing the business users, have at least watched them use the system. Here's what's going to happen if you don't do that. A lot of business uh, users get so used to doing things a specific way that when you say, what is your process? How do you use the system today? They'll actually forget some steps. Until you watch them, until you see what they're doing, Oh, I, I just saw that you opened up that application to do something. What did you do that for? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I do that all the time because that's how I get to convert it from blah to blah, and I got to enter the information in that application there too. That would be good information to know. So, how long does shadowing need to be? I would say, you know, whatever you think 30 minutes, 40 minutes per user, just to get an idea of roughly what they do. Okay? This is not a really long process, but I guarantee you it's a missing process. It's something that we don't, we don't have any allocation of time to do up front, which is this whole stakeholder analysis. Facilitate a workshop with the business leads and SMEs to consolidate, prioritize the target stakeholders, right? Okay, here's the final list that we need to target. And then for each role, for each business user, you know, put together, okay, here's their needs, here's how they relate to the project, here's concerns that I've heard from them, you know, and here's their characteristics. The most important part is don't just stop with the documentation, because I always see people that, once I got everything documented, then I'm done. No, your definition of done for stakeholder analysis is to have an engagement plan and to execute. I am the least interested in just plans that are written. What I'm going to ask you is, do you know how you're going to get these people to engage, how frequently they will engage, and are you getting them engaged? Are they giving you feedback? Are you inviting them? Are you scheduling their feedback sessions? You know, make them part of the project. Prepare them mentally that they're going to be engaged. I remember we did a project and we had a lot of business users that were not used to engaging before. I had to do a whole one hour selling them on why it was important to engage with IT on this upcoming project. And they had some major concerns. Uh, but uh, we don't normally do this, Sally. We have a lot of, we have a real job. This is what you're always gonna hear. We have a real job. This house you're building for me must not be that important with the millions of dollars that we're spending here because my real job is going to be more important. So what you have to explain to them and sell them that this is part of the real job. This is a lot of money that's being spent here. And without you, who's going to be the final user, engaging and interacting, how can this be successful?